What's up everybody, Damon here and in today's gaming news, Xbox is waving a white flag in the console wars, another Metal Gear Solid collection has been spotted, and Todd Howard talks about life in Starfield. This is your Daily Fix. On the first day of Microsoft's court battle with the FTC over the $69 billion acquisition of Activision Blizzard, Microsoft has claimed Xbox has officially lost the console wars. A section of a document submitted by Microsoft describes its entry into the gaming industry in 2001 when its original Xbox was outsold by both Sony and Nintendo by a quote, significant margin. And per Xbox, it hasn't stopped losing the console wars ever since. The document reads, Xbox's console has consistently ranked third of three behind PlayStation and Nintendo in sales. In 2021, Xbox had a share of 16%, while Nintendo and PlayStation had shares of redacted and redacted respectively. Likewise, for console revenues and share of consoles currently in use by gamers, Xbox trails with 21%, while PlayStation and Nintendo have shares of redacted and redacted respectively. Microsoft goes on to argue that as a result, it is betting on a different strategy by generating profit through game sales rather than console sales and selling its consoles at a loss, quote, effectively subsidizing gamers' purchase of the hardware in hopes of making up the revenue through sales of games and accessories. Microsoft is arguing its status as a third place gaming console makes the Activision Blizzard merger necessary to cement itself as a viable competitor with rivals Sony and Nintendo. This is only the first day of the trial. IGN will be covering it to its conclusion, including daily recaps and news from all the newly released documentation. Now to hear from the other side of the console war. Sony has said it won't share plans for the PlayStation 6 with Activision Blizzard if Microsoft's acquisition of the company goes through. As reported by Eurogamer, PlayStation CEO Jim Ryan told the FTC that it couldn't give immensely sensitive information about its next console to a company owned by Xbox. Ryan said Sony, quote, simply could not run the risk of a company that was owned by a direct competitor having access to that information. Now, while Sony won't publicly announce the PS6 for some time, it has discussions and shares hardware with developers well ahead of time so they can prepare games for the new system. This allows for the likes of Call of Duty to appear as a launch title, though Sony is suggesting here that the Microsoft deal going through could prevent this for its next console. It would also allow, Ryan said, for the likes of Call of Duty to be optimized for Xbox during this additional stint of development time. Xbox will presumably have to deal with the same issue when the new console generation comes along, of course, as Sony owns the likes of San Diego Studio and Bungie, who developed the MLB The Show and Destiny franchises respectively, both of which are multi-platform. Moving on, Konami recently announced the contents of Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1 due out this October. Now the internet has spotted the lineup of games for the unannounced Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 2. Twitter user Nitroid found that inspecting the Metal Gear Solid timeline page on the official Metal Gear Solid website reveals placeholder buttons for Metal Gear Solids 4, 5, and Peace Walker. IGN understands this lineup for Master Collection Volume 2 is accurate and has asked Konami for comment. While the entire collection will no doubt excite Metal Gear fans, it's the inclusion of Metal Gear Solid 4 that's of most interest. Kojima Productions' 2008 action-adventure stealth game has been shackled to the PlayStation 3 since launch, and with Master Collection Volume 2 expected to launch on PC, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and Nintendo Switch, an army of newcomers are set to experience Guns of the Patriots for the first time. Now, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker launched first in 2010 as the fifth installment of the series made specifically for the PlayStation Portable. It later snuck onto the PS3 and Xbox 360 as part of the Metal Gear Solid HD collection. And Metal Gear Solid 5 launched in 2015 as Hideo Kojima's final work at Konami. That's my personal favorite in the series. Stay tuned for an official announcement of the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 2. And finally today, Bethesda's Todd Howard has revealed only 10% of Starfield's 1,000 planets will have life on them. Speaking of kind of funny games, Howard explained how Bethesda populated Starfield's universe, saying different planets serve different purposes. He said, for us, we view it as giving you choices when you look at a system. Here's the many things you could do. This could include visiting barren planets that are only there to collect resources, or planets with major cities and settlements for players to explore and progress the story in. He continued, Obviously it's procedural, so there's no way we're going to go and handcraft an entire planet. What we do is we handcraft individual locations, and some of those are placed specifically, like the main cities and other quest locations, and then we have a suite of them that are generated or placed when you land, depending on that planet. So roughly 100 Starfield planets will have life on them. That's certainly a lot more than we currently know of our universe, but IGN user AllsHouse1983 writes, This is supposed to be a video game. I would have been okay with 10 occupied planets that were vastly different from each other, a developer using a thousand planets as a selling point, only to tell people most of them are just resource grinding areas, is a red flag for me. We'll find out for ourselves when Starfield lands on September 6th. 
And that is your daily fix for Thursday, June 22nd. Now that you're caught up on the news, check out Bandai Namco's official upcoming PS5 games trailer. I'm Damon Hatfield, and for all your gaming news, stay tuned to IGN.